welcome to Paper Crafting with Tammy. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. It is awesome to see you here. I have a great project for us today that we're going to start on in just a minute. If you haven't done it yet, take a minute and hit that big red subscribe button so you see what else I've got for you next time. And let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to share with you my steps for creating a mosaic uh, layout. So for this particular layout, I'm using the grid paper that's actually sold by Mosaic Moments. And I used to think, oh, you know, I don't really need that paper. I can do it without it. But I will tell you, it is so much easier to get everything to line up properly when you've got these little corners here. So I'm gonna share with you that today. And when I very first started using Mosaic Moments, I found them at a Scrapbook Expo event. And at that time they were selling a starter bundle and maybe they still do um, that included this grid mat um, for cutting on a really nice cutting tool and then a metal ruler that also is pretty essential for this particular type of work. So that's all you really need and some adhesive. I've also pulled in um, just a few random little scraps that I thought that I may use today. Um, and honestly, it is just some scraps from prior projects because you just don't need a lot for these layouts. Um, so much of the space is taken up with photos and then you're just filling up some of the leftover space. I also had kind of some random um, ribbon in an old fall um, kit. So I went ahead and pulled that out just in case. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you wanna think about when you're doing a mosaic layout is where you wanna have your pictures placed. So let me start by playing around with these a little bit. It's always really important to me to balance colors um, and pull your eye across the page. So I would definitely have something bright kind of up in that first corner. These are super similar. I'm gonna go ahead and kick that one out. And for this particular layout, I think I have enough photos that I'll be able to do some around the outside of each page and then highlight one in the middle. So for now, I'm gonna put that one there. And we'll see what I do with this. And then I like carrying color again across the page. So I've got this red tree here and I'm gonna kind of set that across from that one. At least that's my plan for now. We'll see if it changes. Got these beautiful fall trees. I think I'll highlight on each page. And then just kind of keep some of this rocky landscape photos just around the edges. This is a basic idea of what I would need to get started. If you haven't done a mosaic layout before, I'll tell you a little bit about how this works. Like obviously if I'm gonna put this photo here in the center, you would see these grid lines if I didn't back it. So I am gonna go ahead and back these two for sure. They're right smack in the middle. Um, and when you go to figure out your measurements for these, the easiest way to do that is to take the number of squares. So I've got one, two, three, four squares across and add one eighth for each space in between. So this is not going to need to be four and three eighths across and then one, two, three, four, five, six, six and five eighths down. Okay, so I've got just a solid brown that I'm going to use to go ahead and back and that just creates a perfect size mat for a photo if you're using the entire photo. Now, obviously I'm not gonna do that all throughout this project because the rest of these spaces, I've got three squares wide or I've got two top or two bottom. Some of the extra spots get filled in with just little squares of paper, maybe photo scraps, things like that. Okay. So I am gonna go ahead and look at these, these next. So this one, I definitely want to keep both of these stumps. It's the only one I have that has them both in the same photo. So I may end up kicking this over to the side a little bit, right? It might move this direction. 
so that I can go a little wider here and keep more of this photo. So when I look at this, On a trimmer I get an idea that I'm gonna need four and a half or so so if I've got one two three four and three eighths that's super close so let me go ahead and do that and then I don't want to leave this photo as tall as it is so I'm only gonna make it three squares high so that's one two three and then one two eighths. So three and two eighths or three and a quarter. And then that fits perfectly there. Okay. So I know the measurement of that and I really like to keep things balanced when I do these layouts as much as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one the same way. I'm gonna do four and three eighths. And then three and a quarter. I don't need all of that on the bottom. So that's where we are so far. So now I've got these to deal with in this corner. And I'm gonna think about how I wanna feature these. I've got these really beautiful fall photos up here. So I can think about that as well. I might end up kicking these down a little bit. So I have a little bit more space up here at the top. And I, I do this all the time, you guys, as I'm creating layouts like this, I just kind of keep moving things around. I do like to keep a little bit of space. So I probably would go um, four squares wide with this or even five, but I usually like to have a little bit of space so that I can do some accenting and decorating around the edges or between the photos. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually make this one, one, two, three, four, the same size as this. So I've got a little spot of red here on this photo that I wanna go ahead and keep in. So four and three eighths. Three and a quarter. And I'll do the same with these. Four and three eighths. By three and a quarter. So we've got those ones going. I definitely don't want these quite so tall because I don't want them to compete with this, but I do love both of these photos that I have on the edges. So let's see what size they need to be. I think we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe still keep them um, pretty tall, but just not as big as this. So I think we'll do five and four eighths. So I'm actually gonna need a different trimmer for that. And then, I don't want to back them, so that means it's going to be three and a quarter wide. I'm just going to try to center this up a bit. I'm okay with losing a little bit of it. So three and a quarter. And I'll trim the height on that in just a second. Get this one too. Okay, and if they're gonna be five squares tall, that'll be five and four eighths. Whoever said you're not gonna need fractions, right? Okay. So we'll have to keep playing around with this and decide exactly where we want everything. We're getting some good things cut. Now I've got both of these. Now these are awesome little photos. Um, they don't have a big piece that I really wanna focus on, so I think it's gonna be fine that what I have is some space here. I could also kick this over if I wanted to make it a little bit wider, and that would be okay too. So maybe I'll go ahead and do the three squares wide, 
and then figure out on the height where I want these to be. So remember three squares wide, there's two spaces in the middle. So that would be three and an, uh, two eighths or three and a quarter. I think I'm actually just gonna go with three squares high. So I think I'm gonna do three and a quarter this way as well. Do the same thing here, three and a quarter. At this point, I really like to just start moving things around and get an idea of exactly how I want them so I know where I need to do some filling in. Okay. I think I'm gonna scooch these up, maybe just one of them up. I do like things to be symmetrical, but they don't have to be perfect. So I might bounce those around a little bit, something like that, and then leave these. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll do it something like that. I really like when I have these larger spots left, um, either to do some strips or um, something like that. So because I've got spots all around that are very similar sizes, I'm gonna cut some color blocks to start filling those in. To create pieces for these blocks, I don't wanna do a whole square um, excuse me, I don't want to do the whole rectangle, the whole three by two, but I am going to create some squares. So those will be two and an eighth, because there's just the one space between them. I'm going to cut a couple of these strips so that I have plenty to work with. And then I'll use this smaller trimmer to get the rest. So I can cut four and a quarter, and then two and an eighth. Right away, I've got a couple of them already. Just filling in, adding on that extra little eighth for each of the squares. So if you've ever looked at these layouts and thought, oh my goodness, this is too much. It's really not, they're a lot of fun to make. They come together really quickly and then you can decorate them however you want. You can add all kinds of little things onto those uh, squares that you're creating and really personalize them. Another opportunity to use up scraps. So I'm liking how this is coming together so far. I've got some big strips down here that I can do something with. And then I've got all of these little squares around. Now, just for some visual interest, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is create a little two by one block for here, underneath both of these photos, and then a lot of little one by one squares around the outside, okay? So if you're only covering up one block, then you really only need um, a one by one. So this paper will be perfect for that. So I'm just gonna cut a little four inch section of it. And if you are somebody who has lots of punches and things like that, you may have a one inch punch that would work perfectly for creating these little one inch pieces. I have never really been um, somebody who collects um, punches, so I have just learned how to do things kind of quickly on my own. So I really like how that color, um, I think that's a fun accent. It brings in all of the colors from the layout. So this is when I start really paying attention to that symmetry um, and creating a, a kind of a mirror image with my accents. So I would, if this one is up here, I'm gonna do up here. If it's on 
this side of the page here, I'll do the opposite here. Does that make sense? Okay. That is not the only way to do this by any means. You have lots of opportunities to be creative. I'm just showing you my process. Go here, right here. Let's check out this blue. See how it does. It is like three and three quarter by three. Clean that edge up. Get some one inch strips. So once you've got everything kind of laid out how you like it, then you get to start thinking about how you want to embellish and what you want to do. So off camera, I went ahead and inked around each one of the pieces and I adhered down all of the outer pieces. Okay, so those are all done. Um, I did decide that I wasn't crazy about how this looked underneath these um, two main photos. So I pulled these pieces off and I'm just going to sub in just a beige piece of cardstock to go all the way across. And that's gonna give me an opportunity to put some title information there um, about what we were doing that day and where we were. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those like that. I just will adhere them down real quick. And when you're adhering things onto this mosaic paper, it's so easy to just line up the corner and I just go a little bit above it. And then you can see where your line is and you scooch up and get it adhered down tight. So that's why those markings make it so easy. I also decided that I wanted to go ahead and use a little bit of this ribbon around both of these photos. So I'm gonna make it just a touch wider than the photo on each side. So I'm only going maybe a quarter to a half an inch wide on each of these. And that way I can use just a little piece of adhesive on the back so I can wrap that ribbon around to secure it. So I'm doing that on both. I'm going to go ahead and stick this photo down. And then add just a little touch of a bow. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick trim. And then attach those pieces here. And I'll put a little something there. I'm just using a quick little spot of adhesive. And I'll finish that off in a minute. Same job on this side. All right, and let's go ahead and get this other one cut. Tiny bit of adhesive on the back. And again, I'm just creating a cute little accent here. And I can stick a button or enamel dot, I mean, really anything on top of that to seal that seam. The last thing I've got are some fall leaf stickers that I think would be a really beautiful accent on this page. The colors tie in really well. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these around um, on these green squares. They do have a clear background. So these are gonna blend in pretty well. And those are just going to be, like I said, just a quick 
pretty addition and it helps it feel a little bit more decorative and finished off. like how those are looking. I could have also used like a die cut leaf on here. Um, anything like that. I am a firm believer in using up things out of your stash. I'm just glad these stickers are still sticky because you never really know when you, <laughs> when you go to pull something out. And I'm pretty famous for having things for a long time. All right, so I finished up that sheet of stickers. Still got one square down here, so I'm gonna need to find a little something fun for here. Let's see what I've got for some buttons that would work. Oh yeah, that'll be a good color on there. I have two that match. Hallelujah. I love this Beacon 3-in-1 adhesive. It is super strong. So for buttons and things like that, that's my favorite. Go ahead and add those. All right, so that is my mosaic layout. Hopefully you learned a little bit today about how to use that mosaic moments paper to create a layout like this, um, how to get your photos measured so that they fit appropriately and what things you can do to embellish it. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this layout and if you wanna see more of my work in the future, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button. I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.